Couple of people have had some trouble with these cars. Engines going inside 50 miles, so that's my benchmark. As long as I clear 50 miles, I think we'll be good. everybody, Rob Peretti here and Happy New Year's. And why do we love New Year's so much, right? We can go drink any night. New Year's gives us a reason to draw a line in the sand and say, you know what? This is a perfect time to reset mentally and become a better person in the following year, right? That's a line we love to draw. We want to eat healthier. We want to work out all the time. We want to become better versions of ourselves. And good news, that's where today's video sponsor, Ritual, is here to help. The new year is a great time to recommit yourself to your daily wellness goals. So start the new year off on the right foot with the support of a traceable, high-quality, science-backed product you can trust. Sugars, GMOs, synthetic fillers, artificial colorants are all ingredients you might find in a multivitamin, but Ritual isn't your typical multi. Ritual is formulated with key nutrients including vitamin D3 and omega-3 DHA to help fill the gaps in the diet. Ritual's clean, vegan-free formula is made with key nutrients and forms your body can actually use with no shady extras. Their fresh-tasting, delayed-release capsules are designed to dissolve later in less sensitive areas of the stomach and can be taken with or without food. Your multivitamins are delivered to your door each month with free shipping. And if you don't love Ritual within your first month, they'll refund your first order. Go to ritual.com SSR30 or click the link in the description and use code SSR30 for 30% off your first month of Ritual. That's ritual.com SSR30 or click the link below in the description. It's going to take you to their website. Use promo code SSR30 and you could start living a better lifestyle today while saving money. What's going on everybody? Rob Peretti here and it's a good day because... I got my first Z06 in and pretty excited about this one. This actually came in uh, probably two weeks ago and just getting around to coming out to uh, George Maddox Chevrolet here in Detroit to pick it up. Now, why did I wait two weeks to get it? Well, the answer is I like to drive these home because this car needs 500 break-in miles and I'm about 610 miles from home. So this allows me to drive it get a feel for it and honestly like normally I would just stick it on a transporter I was a little bit excited about this one this is the quickest way to get 500 miles in the thing because starting effectively tomorrow this car will be uh, able to be rented this is the first of the z06s I have the one that I want for myself is going to have the z07 package the z07 package was limited currently uh, there was a lot of uh, backlog on the carbon bits so this order was able to get done for the rental company quicker and i'm going to put the higher wicker bill on the back on the wing here it's got the uh, taller wicker bill and that'll make it look a little bit more aggressive but this car carbon brakes i mean I'll, I'll do the whole build out what i put into it um i've got a nine hour drive ahead of me which i'll probably try to shave an hour or two off of but i do want to get on the road relatively soon and start making my way back Look at this engine here, give you a little preview. So funny, the uh, smell of the new Corvettes has been the same for since I got my C5 20 plus years ago. Oh, look, handcrafted by Mike Ward. Thank you, Mike. This is gonna make many people a smile, if you know what I mean. This is, uh, this is not your typical C8 Corvette, and this is going to be uh, pretty much a a winter game changer for me here in the New York region. Now the car MSRP'd out at 133 roughly. Uh, and this, the idea behind building this was to build it as close to a Z07 as we could without delaying the production, waiting on parts. So we did the carbon brakes. Uh, we did all the, the upgrades. Now, I'll, yeah, again, I'll go through all the breakdown of what's in the car and everything like that. but. This is me being happy, being excited to drive something. Because I, as much as I enjoy renting cars, I don't really care too much to drive stuff. Like I, I don't, I didn't get super excited about like my third or fourth C8. This one actually has me excited. I didn't go to any of the GM press stuff. I don't know why I don't get invited to that stuff. I don't, I don't list myself as a journalist, so I never get those invites. But I saw a lot of people had a lot of fun with these things and they said a lot of good things. And I'm excited to experience this for myself 
and let you know my thoughts. And I'm sure there's been a thousand YouTube videos about the differences between the C8 and the Z06. But if you haven't seen those and you're not aware what this car is, this car is special because this is like a 458 Corvette. I'll be able to do a side-by-side -side comparison because I also have another orange one at my shop, which is a 2023 uh, non-Z06. So we'll get a good side-by-side -side as to the differences between the two. All right, let's, uh, let's do a first start. What do you think? <laughs> Not gonna lie, it's a pretty solid cold start. Like that, that'll wake the neighbors. And this is a stock exhaust. This isn't a modified exhaust in any way. So, it's pretty aggressive, I like it. Here's the inside, if you wanna see the spec. Do not drive through a car wash, got it. All right. Six miles on it. So I'm 494 miles away from having a good time. All right, I'm excited. It's gonna be a fun trip. All right, Z06, nine hour road trip coming up. Detroit to New Jersey. A couple of people have had some trouble with these cars. Engines going inside 50 miles. So that's my benchmark. As long as I clear 50 miles, I think we'll be good. All right, buckling up, and here we go. All right, we are two miles into the trip here, leaving Detroit, and it says I'm going to be where I'm going at 9.14 p.m. I'm gonna to try to get there by eight o'clock with a lunch stop and probably two gas stops. That's my goal, I'm gonna be at the Mora in Norwood, New Jersey. test when spending you know, for the people that are spending a hundred thousand dollars over a list or something is does anyone else care other than you so i'm gonna be having my pizza hut here in ohio and i'm gonna observe and see if anyone gives a rat's in about the 2023 z06 right there right off the highway which passed many of them on the way through and the uh, amount of time it took me to eat a good chunk of what is not actually pizza and a good chunk of what is not actually a breadstick. I've experienced probably 15 to 20 people walk past the car and somebody may glance over but nobody actually, I would, I would say interest would be taking a photograph of it. Like, oh wow, look at that, we take a picture of it, which the total number is zero. All right, I lost 30 minutes to a gas stop and lunch. It's very underwhelming, but now it says I'm going to be there at 9.08, so I have to shave an hour and 10 minutes off and probably have another gas stop. 200 miles in and we're doing good. A lot of people have had issues, but they're generally like right out of the gate, like 10 miles, 50 miles, whenever something fails. After 200 miles, the anxiety is pretty much gone. Knock on something. A lot of people have complained about like transmission issues and whatnot on... Corvettes, the C8 Corvettes. I can tell you I've got over 100,000 miles on mine uh, the four that I had and legitimately like zero problems. So let's see if you can see the uh, heads up display. I got it tilted the right way. There you go. Pretty cool. And I have to say, eighth gear does make this car bearable to drive on road trips. It's one of those things that if you have a drone, it's going to give you a headache after a while. And Seventh gear, let me just kick it down the gear. That's sixth, hold on. Give me 
seventh. But like just driving in sixth gear, or even seventh gear, you have a drone, right? It's like that would annoy you, not maybe initially, but after 20 minutes, but when you hit eighth gear, I mean, you're stealth mode. Like this is like borderline electric maintaining speed and able to drive the car long distances without getting a headache, which you have to put a lot of value on. Just crossed 400 miles here in Pennsylvania and average fuel economy, 17.6 highway. And that's using a lot of eighth gear. It's not that great, but I guess I never looked at what my Ferrari does. So maybe it's not that bad. I don't know. Just trying to figure out which pump to go to. And I think I got the right one. Mercedes wheels. And thank you, the great state of Pennsylvania. Mile marker 277.6. It was probably four tenths of miles. 278, right lane, center of the freaking road, giant pothole. I just bent the front right rim. I can feel it. Got a vibration in this thing. That's annoying. That sucks. Somebody should go take a picture of that. But that's absolute horseshit on a brand new car I hit that thing and I felt like the car jumped up in the air that's a load of bullshit quick rest area stop Let's see at least I'm holding air I'm at 33 pounds but something got its ass kicked up there It's got to be a back barrel bend. I'm sending that one out, at least for balancing. All right, safe to drive. I had a fighting chance. It's with a half hour lunch break and then two fuel stops. And then I stopped to check my tires. Still a chance. Uh, I don't know, it's, uh, it? it's 8.02, which for calling my right. shot will be on the right. eight hours ago, that wasn't bad. I was legitimately like one like tire stop check. So that two minutes I pulled over into the rest area to check the tire was the difference of me calling that shot down in a minute eight hours ago to me pulling up to Demora to have dinner. Like I even if I live down the road from here Your and I usually get here way. later than if I call eight o'clock. Alright, dinner time. Back here at Gotham Dream Cars and Figured out my noise. There was a noise that I didn't bring up yesterday. I thought the seat just had to be moved up further because I was hearing a rattling here. And these are these cool carbon seats. So I thought it was just hitting the uh, the back firewall. It was actually just this thing wasn't snapped in. So that was like tapping uh, on uneven surfaces. But uh, I did find out the pothole at mile marker 278 going eastbound on Route 80. I was looking at the front wheel much more in depth and then I got back I called e uh, ETD over here in Englewood I was going to take this off and run it over because I didn't see any damage on it but I figure it's just got to be a back barrel bend or something like that and then the way the car was parked I saw the back wheel and I was like oh yeah that's it that one uh this is driving down a highway which which didn't have any potholes so I wasn't really on the lookout for potholes and that's in between the spokes, which is why it probably caved versus the front, which it probably took a bigger impact. Although there's a little bit less weight up here than back there, took a bigger impact, but probably hit on the spoke somewhere. So I'm gonna take these both off, bring them over to ETD, get this one straightened. Of course, it's always nice to damage your car going straight on a highway. Uh, thank you, P-A-D-O-T, whatever you're called. I would uh, get out to mile marker 278. If anyone wants to go to mile marker 278 and send me a photo of this gigantic crater in the middle of the, like legitimately 
in the middle of the road on the left lane at mile marker 278. By the time I looked down, I'm like, oh boy. And it launched the car up in the air, which is wild. I was like, well, that hurt. I thought, I thought there was no way I didn't blow out a tire, let alone just bend a wheel, but I definitely noticed. Now, I mean, I, I'm not gonna lie, it still drives fine-ish, but I did notice there was definitely a bend. I've got a good uh, butt dyno for stuff like that. But it's back. It'll be rentable in just say 48 hours. You've got to get uh, the other GPS devices in it. And we're off to the races. I would say, if you were going to ask me, best Corvette ever produced. That's where, I'm, that's where I'm going with this one. So it's definitely an experience. It's definitely a much more car than the C8. The only complaint I would have is it looks a little bit too similar to the C8. And that's where the Z07 performance, or the, uh, the carbon package comes in, but those were sort of back ordered for parts right now. And all the influencers got it. So you make it think it's available, but uh, this wasn't done under the influencer program. This was just done under uh, dealer allocation, so. There you go. There's my thoughts. Uh, I will do some comparisons with the 458, which is what they benchmarked this car with. And uh, even with the orange C8, but that's out on rent right now. So now I have two 2023 C8s, one Z06 and one convertible. Stay tuned.